Ah, it's never too early for a little barbecue. I was just that about looks to say good. That. that looks amazing. Mm. Can't wait to hear from Jenny. You know, after a long week, I had to turn to my kid for a little uh, kid joke, uh, Stella, and he, he told me, "Why was the math book crying?" I was like, "What? Why did the math book?" Because it had a lot of problems. Oh. I was like, I was like you know what? After a week of a lot of problems, I was like, I needed a good laugh. Yeah. Thank you, son. Good job. <laughs> Turning to our kids for laughter. Yeah. That is great. And I saw that you were having such a great time with your daughter this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Was she pouting because you were telling her to leave somewhere? Is we that were, what I understand? Yes. <laughs> we, we love going to the farmer's market, uh -huh. and she didn't want to leave. She's, She's like, so cute. She literally put her hands in her pockets and was like, fine. I know. Let's go. With her pink little, like, Ugg boots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're little fake Uggs. We won't tell yeah. her. They're fake, but the, she's fine with it. Yeah, she had a nice time. The farmer's market always a good place to go. It was such a gorgeous weekend. I mean, the sun was shining. It felt warm. And, well, we are in the middle of this warm-up, so just you wait. By the end of this week, we'll be sweating across San Diego. I mean, we're talking mid to upper 80s. Look at our skies right now, these east-facing cameras showing that sliver of high cloud coverage. We also have high surf to talk about. It's peaking this morning. In about an hour, that's when we'll see the highest of our surf during our high tide. We'll talk about the coastal flooding that's possible, where some of those susceptible spots will be. Santa Ana winds today as well, dropping humidity, and yes, temperatures will be soaring by the end of the week. Jenny. Well, I'm going to spare you from any uh, really long traffic report because it's nice and quiet out there. Number one, your travel times are fine. I'm even going to show you uh, as I zoom in to the middle of the county here. I was mentioning that there was an issue with the traffic lights south on the 805 at Bonita. Even that has been cleared away. Quick check of the North County crash free. Keep in mind the 76 are still doing some maintenance work here on the westbound side. So between Jamie's Lane and Panky, a couple lanes are closed. Back to you. Jenny, thank you. Today, House Democrats plan to call on Vice President Mike Pence and President Trump's cabinet to invoke the 25th Amendment to remove him from office. Now, if that doesn't work... Yeah, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says Democrats will begin impeachment efforts then, accusing the president of inciting an insurrection at the Capitol. Deborah Alfram, live on Capitol Hill now with an update for us. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning, Eric and Stella. And two Republican senators are also adding their names. They want the president to resign, but he is resuming his presidential duties. Today, he's expected to speak and rail against big tech in the wake of being banned by Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And then tomorrow, he's going to head down to the U.S.-Mexico border to talk about his administration's successes in building the border wall. A growing number of Republicans say President Trump should leave office now. To resign and go away as soon as possible. I think the best thing would, for the country to heal would be for him to resign. But with resignation unlikely, Democrats are looking at other options to hold President Trump responsible for the assault on the U.S. Capitol. Nothing is off the table. In an interview with 60 Minutes, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said she prefers the 25th Amendment to immediately remove the president from office. Because it gets rid of him. He's out of office, uh, but there is strong support in the Congress uh, for impeaching the president a second time. House Democrats will attempt to pass a resolution this week calling on Vice President Mike Pence and the cabinet to act. If they do not, Democrats say they will introduce articles of impeachment. Every minute and every hour that he is in office represents a clear and present danger. A draft article, Incitement of Insurrection, alleges that President Trump's conduct on Wednesday gravely endangered the security of the United States. We will never get Give up, we will never concede. The House could wait months to send the articles to the Senate. If convicted, even after his term, it would prevent Mr. Trump from running again in 2024. Let's give President-elect uh, Biden uh, the 100 days he needs to get his agenda off uh, and running. Yesterday, police held a procession on Capitol Hill for Officer Brian Sicknick, who died from injuries he sustained in the riot. And Vice President Pence called Officer Sicknick an American hero. The president has, said, has not said anything about him yet. Eric and Stella. All right, Deborah Alfaron reporting live from the Capitol. Thank you, Deborah. You know, many of you are talking about all of this online as well. So Jenny is joining us now with more reaction. Well, yeah, you, our viewer, have mixed opinions about removing President Trump from office. So here are just a few, just a sampling of the comments that we've gotten so far. So Don writes in. Why not concentrate on more important matters, such as more vaccines, better budgets, working on helping us out business here in the United States that have went under or are about to. Now, Vani says, yeah, 
he must not be allowed to just run out the clock. He must be held accountable for this criminal act of inciting an insurrection against our government. Now, if you feel like joining the conversation, just meet us on over at our Facebook page. Nine days until the new administration mm -hmm. takes effect. All right. Jenny, thank you. And three people were arrested after the Trump supporters and counter protesters, some of them describing themselves as anti fascists, called, uh, clashed, excuse me, in Pacific Beach over the weekend. Here are some images uh, of uh, those uh, protests. Five people, five police officers, excuse me, were hurt as they tried to keep the groups apart. San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria says there's no place for behavior like this in San Diego. We'll have more on the mayor's response coming up at 6 30. Today marks a big push in the coronavirus fight. One of the largest vaccination sites in the country opening at Petco Park. The goal is to vaccinate thousands of health care workers a day. News 8's Chris Grow is live with a closer look at how this is all going to work here, Chris. And good morning, Eric, and this is really quite the effort that we're seeing about to take place at its full strength. They want to vaccinate as many as 5000 people per day. There will be 300 uh, people inside this super center, uh, the super vaccination center uh, with about 60 nurses there designated to administer these vaccinations. And so this is how it will be working. Those who have made appointments will be going in in their car. So this will be drive through style and the Essentially what they'll be doing is lowering that window, putting out that arm and waiting for a nurse to give them the vaccine. Then they go to another area where an observer will watch them for 15 minutes to make sure that there's no reaction. So this is scheduled to open up at 7 a.m. This morning, it's going to be open for 12 hours a day for seven days a week to get as many people vaccinated as they possibly can. Again, this is a public, private and nonprofit partnership. We are talking about the county, the city, the Padres pitching in as well to make sure that we can vaccinate as many people as we can right now in tier 1A so that we can move on to vaccinate even more people. We want to move with the speed and an urgency of getting people through. And so we will have a verification. You will have to produce documentation, um, but we are going to have a bias towards uh, action. Yeah, so you do have to prove that you are a healthcare worker when you show up and after you've made your appointment. But if you're a healthcare worker at home watching this and you haven't been vaccinated yet, go to our website, cbs8.com. Click on that help button for uh, some more info about how to make an appointment here. Eric and Stella. Chris, thank you for that. Today marks one year since the first known death from the coronavirus was reported in China. Already this year, at least 265 San Diegans have died. 455 have died since Christmas. 3,288 new cases are being reported out of more than 31,000 tests. More than 400 San Diegans are currently in the ICU and more than 1,700 are hospitalized. Just 16% of San Diego's total ICU space is left. Starting today, small businesses struggling during the pandemic can start applying for the latest round of the Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP. For the first two days, only first-time businesses can apply. Second-time applicants can apply starting Wednesday. Applications will be limited to smaller lenders after criticism that larger banks and companies were favored last time. And now for a check of our forecast, let's go ahead and check in with Netta. We're talking about high surf, high tide. Those <laughs> waves are going to be peaking. Ooh, did you see that guy yes, just flipping? Yes, that. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Leave it up to the pros. Oh, they were out all weekend. They've been out all week across our local beaches enjoying these big, big waves. I've just been sitting back admiring and watching. But today, things are going to get even bigger. This was at Wind and Sea yesterday where the surf was about 4 to 7 feet. Today, we're looking at 6 to 10 feet with the potential of 12 footers. So that's why we're really emphasizing there could be minor coastal flooding because of this. Here's a look at the headlines when it comes to our high surf. This is the highest in the series of storms that have been coming at the West Coast. We haven't had any rain from them, but we've had these big West Northwest swells and they'll be peaking right around 7 to 730 this morning. That's when our high tide will be at our local beaches. Coastal flooding possible, beach erosion possible. These are some of the main spots where we could see some of that over at Cardiff State Beach, portions of Del Mar, La Jolla Shores, Mission Beach, and Imperial Beach. So these are kind of lower lying locations that the Weather Service wants.
wanted to point out that the, you could see the water getting all the way up to the boardwalks and the parking lots. Look now what our buoys are showing. Seven and nine foot waves at these two spots. Of course, there's a lot of areas that are bigger, especially south of La Jolla Shores all the way to IB. That's where we typically would see the biggest waves from this direction of the swell that's coming at us. Coastal flood advisory. This does not get issued very often for our beaches. It's going to last until 10 o'clock this morning because of that chance of minor flooding, the parking lots, the boardwalks, any low lying spot. And then our high surf advisory, we're still under that. That's been issued for over a week now, and that'll expire tomorrow at 1 p.m. So again, all of this peaking with 6 to 10 foot waves, up to 12 footers possible out there. We'll send it over to Jenny now. Well, not too much change uh, traffic wise, which is great. Here's the overall picture. Any icons that you're seeing are mostly just ongoing construction, nothing too brand new. So here are your travel times through National City, taking the 805 Coronado Bridge, even that has cleared away, so there's barely any visible volume. Keep in mind that they're doing construction work on Diamond Street. It's actually that no through traffic, the slow streets program that they're doing. So Diamond is shut down from Mission to only. This is where they're doing a little bit of construction. It's northbound on the five at Pacific Highway. Two of your lanes are shut down because of that, but it's not really causing any big you know, delays. Here on the 76, there's maintenance work. So specifically on that westbound drive from Jamie's Lane to Panky, a couple lanes are shut down. Here on the 5, I do want to mention this. I know it's kind of far up north, but there is a SIG alert here on the southbound side of the 5 at El Camino Real. There was an oil spill there, an earlier crash. So left-hand shoulder, a couple lanes blocked towards San Clemente over there. The rest of your travel times to the north are fine. Back to you.